Hi, my name is Kat. I'm an artist, teacher, and I'm going gray, but I've always gone gay. And you're watching Artists Beware, the series where I talk about all of the shady things affecting artists. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and go over to my Patreon where I post exclusive videos every single month. Today, as the title entails, we are talking about the pure evil of Instagram, why it is so awful for artists, why I, as a self-employed artist, quit, even though it is where I had the largest audience, and why I think we're starting to see a shift in the way creative people use social media. Part one, a simple plan. So I have always hated Instagram. I think it is up there with Facebook, not so coincidentally, with probably the worst social media platform. And obviously I'm, I'm gonna spend a lot of time dissecting why in this video, but I first want to paint a context for how I have used social media and like how it has affected my career trajectory as an artist, or it has impacted me in general as an artist because I've been online posting shit for a very long time, for, for better and definitely for worse. I was a early adopter of the current age of social media back in the late aughts. I had a Twitter and I had a Tumblr. Um, I was even fucking tweeting from my Motorola Razor. And I had a YouTube channel as well, um, where I was riding that initial wave of uh, vlogging that became really popular. It was clear to me that like this was going to be the way that we were gonna interact online, um, just because of its ease of use and its connectivity. I was really into it at the time. And I mean, I had a blog that I programmed myself on my own dedicated website when I was like 14, which, that probably shouldn't, 14 year olds shouldn't have a website. I, I knew that that was gonna kind of fade out and, and these platforms were ushering in a new wave of the internet. But for me, I was still a literal child and there wasn't a drive to like become rich off of it or really make money. I just wanted to make cool things, make friends, and like express my creativity as well as my stupid high school emo thoughts. When I went into college in 2011, I sort of dropped all of the other social media platforms I was on and just stuck to Tumblr because I felt like that was kind of the place where quirky SJW trans art kids were and the binder fit. I mostly just stuck to Tumblr, where I began posting my art that I was making in college. And over a few years, I built up a small audience of a couple thousand on there. I still hated the idea of Instagram, even though it was quite popular, even back then. And I hated Facebook. And I like completely refused to join either one of those until I was edging close to graduating college and I knew if I wanted to be a professional artist that I had to be on every social media platform. Uh, so I made a Instagram and a Facebook begrudgingly and I didn't really think much of it or spend much time on it because I thought all of the interactions on there were just like extremely fake and surface level and it felt gross uh, and I still think all of those things. Um, it feels disingenuous. Um, and it feels like there isn't a sense of community on there like other social media platforms like Twitter and Tumblr. And I just didn't really get the appeal. So when I graduated college, I kind of started like aging out of Tumblr. And this is when I think it was bought by Verizon and it was just kind of sort of fading out of popularity. So I kind of migrated everything over to Twitter and I was able to sort of retain some of my audience when I switched over there, which really helped. Um, and then I started using Twitter for like basically everything, not just like posting my art and for like career shit, but also just like making friends and social interactions and keeping up with my real life friends too, which 
I still do all of that today. I'm still grinding on that shit. I also felt like I understood Twitter a lot better and I was able to kind of like make viral tweets, which helped gain an audience for my art. Um, and I still kind of do that where I'll make jokes that will go viral. That kind of like feeds people back <laughs> to my profile where they're like, oh, this person also does art. Like that's how I've managed to get to whatever, 40,000 followers. But Instagram never connected with me the same way. I, I just never really got how to retain and grow an audience, which I hate saying that. It's disgusting to me to be like, retain growth. It's dirty capitalist bullshit, entrepreneurship, pyramid scheme, fucking inside lingo, and I don't like it at all. So there my Instagram remained with just, I don't know, I had like a few hundred followers to a few thousand followers. I got some larger sort of shout outs and um, people posting my artwork on there. <laughs> also got plenty of times people posting my artwork without credit. I never felt like I was able to naturally get new eyes on my art on Instagram. To me, all you had were these bullshit fucking hashtags that people cluttered the bottom of their posts with and mom used like a Pinterest board. I always felt like that was tacky um, and I never liked doing it, but that seemed like it was one of the only ways that people could actually find your work was using hashtags, which fed back to the explore page and people would find things that were tagged with that, either ranked by the most popular posts or the most latest posts and things like that. So you can kind of find similar things to what you like. My disinterest in this and my refusal to play the game continued until I posted a video of me painting in 2019. My banks are like at that awkward length. They're just gonna do this. They're just, um, I set it to some music. I had a couple of quick messy cuts in it and I posted it not really thinking of anything, just me finishing a painting. That is when I discovered that Instagram loves videos. That stupid little video had multiple times the views, the comments, the likes, the engagement that a still image version of the same painting did. So following the high of more likes and more views, I started to make more videos like it. And I got really into shooting these short little 45 seconds process videos. And I was posting them to Twitter and they did well in there. I was posting it on Instagram and it was doing well in there too. And lo and behold, I started gaining a lot of followers in a very short amount of time. I went from maybe two or 3,000 to 35,000 in six, eight months, which may not sound like that much to people with very large platforms. But for me at the time, I had never had that many people looking at my art. So I was like really excited. And it was also great for my bank account. Like I was trying to support myself solely with my art at the time. And this was at the beginning of the pandemic and my husband had been laid off. So it was really, really great timing that I was getting this influx of attention because sales went along with that. Um, I was selling more prints, I was selling more originals. It felt good and like I had reached a level of success that I had been trying and working really, really hard for, for years. Um, I had spent years like slowly, slowly building up people who liked my work and getting it out there. And then finally it just like all clicked and it took off and it felt so good. And then we came to August of 2020 when it all came to a screeching halt. And I have literally been hemorrhaging followers for a year and a half since. So what happened? Well, that my dearies, is the result of the big a-hole in the room, the algorithm. But do the algorithm. So like I said, I had discovered for myself that videos did significantly better on Instagram. But why is that? Well, I think we need to first 
kind of rewind time and go back to around 2015 for what I think laid the foundation for what is called the pivot to video movement. So let me explain what the pivot to video movement was. So a lot of publishing companies and media outlets around 2015 started to make a lot more video content rather than written or image-based content for their social media platforms and their websites. This was, I don't want to say largely a result, but definitely a big factor was Facebook basically duping these companies, these media outlets and these publishing companies into believing that making more video content and putting it on their platforms would yield better financial results for them. Since Facebook was telling them and their investors that video content performed much better and it's what the people wanted. This caused an extremely damaging and long lasting ripple effect across journalists and editors at places like Vox or Mike or Buzzfeed. This, however, would come to bite many of these companies in the ass just a couple years later, because uh, turns out Facebook was lying. They just straight up lied to investors and to media outlets about how well videos were doing on their platforms by measures of 100 to 900%. This actually resulted in a class action lawsuit. Even companies that manage the video content for some outlets like Condé Nast or places like Buzzfeed that succeeded in this pivot to video have now kind of, mm, flopped, I want to say, because they ended up overworking and treating their video producers like shit. And all of them left to go do their own thing because it turns out uh, not owning any of the things that you make uh, turns you uh, a little bit sour. I encourage you to look up why I left BuzzFeed or look at what happened to the people involved in Bon Appetit who got treated like shit and uh, were victims of a lot of racism. I encourage you to look that up and see for yourself uh, just how bad they treat also their video producers. So before the fallout of these companies who unsuccessfully pivoted to video, partly as a result that Facebook was lying, also because their videos sucked and turns out people still like to read. Facebook and in turn Instagram because Facebook owns Instagram and I'm not calling them meta. They were trying so freaking hard to integrate as many video features onto their platforms as possible that no one fucking asked for. Like in 2017, Facebook and Instagram both rolled out stories as a way to try to chomp Snapchat's flavor. And Instagram extended the video length of their video and they even tried to implement what they called Instagram TV, which was basically nothing <laughs> and nobody used it. Obviously they were doing this not because the users wanted it, but because it was more profitable for them. But how exactly was it more profitable? Well, you see, the more videos that are hosted on their platforms, the more those videos will show up in people's feeds. And the more those show up in people's feeds, the longer people are to spend on those platforms. You spend more time with a video than you do a photo, or you aren't being linked to an article outside of Facebook to go read it. You're staying directly on the platform to ingest the content for an extended period of time, which means the longer you are spending on those platforms, the more that they can advertise to you and the more that they can charge companies for that advertising. And just as a baseline, video advertising costs more to advertisers. It became clear that Instagram was 
especially trying so goddamn hard to push videos onto its users. And one of the ways that they were doing that behind the scenes was favoring video content in their algorithms. That's why they changed things from being chronological to a whatever the fuck we have now so that they can basically curate what comes up on your feed in order of the likelihood that you'll continue to use their platform. So it's not chronological and it's not your feed from the people that you follow. It is Instagram's blended, fucked up version of the people that you follow basically being siphoned onto your feed in a way that is best for Instagram and not you. So basically this all means that based on the content you post as an artist and how much you post and what those posts look like, they will either be pushed onto people's feeds or hidden. Like people just straight up will not see your post because it does not come up on their feed. Very cool. Instagram and Facebook are not the only platforms to do this. Twitter does this to an extent. TikTok and YouTube do this and they have their own problems, believe me, which would require their own video because wow, are those platforms also messed up in their own unique ways? But right now we're talking about Instagram. But it, Instagram and Facebook seem to be the most egregious offenders of cherry picking content from the people that you follow to show you in order to cater to advertisers. And especially the problem with Instagram opposed to other platforms is that it requires the reliance on their algorithm in order for you to just experience the app, right? So it can make it nearly impossible to get new eyes on your work as an artist unless you are playing the game that Instagram has set up. Let me give you an example. So with Twitter, you can retweet, you can do quote tweets, you can share links in a tweet and linked outside of just Twitter. On TikTok, you can stitch and duet posts. And on Facebook, you can link things like you can on Twitter. But Instagram, you can't do any of that. That kind of like built in, sort of like intuitive connectivity with other people and other websites outside of the platform helps a more like organic word of mouth to share things for better and for worse. But with Instagram, you can't do any of that. The only like crumb of sharing other people's posts that they give you without just entirely reposting it yourself and removing any sort of like trail directly back to the original poster is to share posts on stories, which only a smaller percentage of the user base even uses stories and they're only there for fucking 24 hours. The click-through rates on posts <laughs> shared through stories is fucking laughable. So much so that I just stopped trying. Like I would be like, oh, I have new, new prints in my shop or I have a new YouTube video up or I made a new post <laughs> on Instagram. Nobody would fucking click those. Part of the reason why I think is because it is such a pain in the ass, this is a tangent. It is such a pain in the fucking ass to click on a fucking post and go to it from a story it has to be intentional, right? Like it has to be intentional so that you don't actually do it because it is like <sighs> mind numbingly annoying. The amount of times that I've like tried to click on the post in somebody's story and it just going to the next fucking story because if you tap it, it just goes to the next story even though you're tapping on a fucking post that's embedded in the goddamn story. It drives me nuts. It literally, I hate it. I hate it so much. And by the way, if you want to link to anything outside of Instagram on a story, you have to have 10,000 followers anyway. 
first for some reason. And and on this note, the biggest problem about the limited connectivity of Instagram that absolutely shoots artists in the foot is that you cannot link to things on a post. Obviously, so they can just like keep you on the platform and you don't leave the app at all. But it is so painful as an artist who's trying to support themselves with like shop sales to be like, hey, can you go uh, click this link? Which by the way, you can only have one link in your bio. Actually, you can't even have a link in your bio. It has to be in the, the link section. Go and click that. Go off of this post, go onto my page, go click that and then go to my shop. No one's gonna do that. The click-through rates on, on, on those is so bad. There's no good way to link to your shop unless, of course, your shop is hosted on Facebook. So all of this basically just like funnels its users into only existing on their app ecosystem, which, like I've said already a million times, this hurts artists or anybody who's like trying to run a business, it hurts them so bad because they're either A, going to get crap sales, no one's gonna go to their shop, or they have to pay for advertising, which is what they really want you to do. They want you to pay for advertising because not only does an ad show up every three posts, but you sure can link things to shops if you're paying for advertising. Trying to navigate all of these problems as just a singular artist who's like, doesn't have a team or isn't a celebrity is like nearly impossible. It's like a full-time job to just post to Instagram enough to appease the algorithms they have in place. It feels like throwing spaghetti at a wall, except that wall has giant spikes on it and it is slowly moving towards you and about to crush you like a booby trap in a cartoon Egyptian pyramid. And said, I wish I was throwing spaghetti at Mark Zuckerberg's face. Basically, it comes down to if you're an artist or a writer or a photographer or anyone that isn't a celebrity or has a team or isn't a business or isn't paying for advertising, you are at a objective disadvantage and it can be so hard to gain an audience and retain that audience and just get them to see what you're doing even though they already follow you. And it can feel like Instagram hates you. And that's because they kind of do, because you're not making them enough money. Playing this game through 2019 and 2010 was extremely exhausting, but I kind of put up with it for a year and a half because I felt like I was able to like game the system enough to make it work for me. But like I said at the top of this part of the video, that changed in August of 2020. And I still haven't told you what happened in August of 2020. So let's talk about it. Part three, Reels get the video star. Instagram introduced Reels. Who boy. Do I hate reels? <laughs> I have to like physically calm myself and consciously not yell when I talk about reels because I get so angry. Nobody asked for this and nobody likes it. For those who are lucky enough to not have experienced reels firsthand, they are essentially a clone of TikTok within Instagram except that it is worse than TikTok in every conceivable way. And most of the videos that are on there are just reposted TikToks anyway. To me, it was clear when they introduced Reels that image posts were no longer the focus of Instagram anymore. They, they did the biggest pivot to video of all. They even changed their UI to this horrible nightmare bullshit that it is now, where if you go to try to make a post in the middle of your fucking app, it brings you to reels. Oh, I can't play that because that's gonna probably be copyrighted. And when they when they committed to this shift, 
they basically cut blood flow off to former video posts. And this also affects still image posts too, because it basically discouraged people from using the explore page, which was primarily the way that artists and, and other creators got people to look at their work anyway. Less people were using the explore page and discovering their work through the means that they normally had. It can't be understated how how impactful the, the explore page could be if if you did well on it. Some of my posts that got high up on a lot of people's explore pages had 15, 20,000 likes compared to just a couple thousand likes from other posts that I made. So it could mean a huge influx of attention and followers and sales. So when they cut blood flow off to that, I felt it in real time, the way that their pivot to reels completely screwed me up. When I tried to make videos the same way that I had when reels were starting to be heavily pushed, I was seeing multiple, multiple times less views than almost like the exact same videos, the same type of videos. Not only did it like change the way that people discover the videos, it actually changed like the video posting methods themselves. It changed the aspect ratio. It changed the time uh, limit. I had to start remaking all of my videos and changing the way that I filmed and edited them specifically just to try to post them to reels. I had to make specific versions of the videos that I was making just to post to Reels. And when I did, they were treated like shit anyway. When I switched over to Reels from regular video posts, they still did bad because nobody was using Reels. The pivot to Reels made no sense to the average person using Instagram. People were perplexed at this decision, but it seems like they did it probably for two primary reasons. One, they realized that younger millennials and Gen Z folks were not using Instagram as much and had moved over to TikTok. So they wanted to try to emulate TikTok on their own platform. And so they could stick more fucking ads right in the way of your feed. Everyone hated this and still hates it. And so I want to um, kind of stop my angry rant, calm down a little bit, and I want to talk about how this affected me psychologically and emotionally, because it did. It had a pronounced effect on me. But for I quit. When I saw this withdrawal of attention, yeah, it hurt my ego a little bit. I can't lie. Getting accustomed to having a lot of tension and, and people really liking something that you've worked so hard on for like a decade finally feels really good and when that's taken away arbitrarily that feels bad but there are two other ways that i think has affected me more significantly um and one of them was monetarily because i was supporting both me and my husband at the time because he was laid off due to the pandemic and things were stressful and scary and feeling like I no longer knew how well things I were was making were going to perform like stressed me out. I was fucking stressed <laughs> in a real way and that affected the way I made things and what I made. I was now making things that I thought were going to perform better on Instagram and I made them in a way that I thought was going to perform better on Instagram. Um, and I got burnt out. It got to the point where I was talking about Instagram and therapy, which felt so pathetic. It felt like delusional to me to be anxious about it. And I felt like such a privileged piece of shit asshole being like, I'm not getting the attention that I want. It felt like the change in attention was a reflection on me as an artist. I was like, am I making bad art? What did I do to 
fuck up. And I know all of this sounds crazy and conceited and first world problems, which obviously it is. But if you talk to other artists, especially those who were and still are trying to like use Instagram to help support themselves, they will all tell you pretty much the same thing. All of this like psychological impact brought me to a creative breaking point. It really made me start to hate the thing I had spent the last decade of my life loving, which was making art and painting. I was starting to hate it. And it got to the point where I was like, I, I don't care anymore. I can't do this. It's this, this is not worth it. I'm going to quit. So I just fucking stopped posting. It was also during this time that I realized how much like physical damage I had done to my body as well. Um, I was in physical therapy for fibrosis uh, and tendonitis in my painting arm because um, I had worked myself too fucking hard from like 2017 to 2020 that my body just like couldn't take it anymore. At 28 years old, I'm still dealing with this injury and I've had cortisone shots and like it's just not getting better and I've clearly damaged my arm. I think it was actually probably the smartest decision that I could have made. And I'm really, really glad that I made the decision to quit Instagram. And I took those some of those skills of, of video production and I started making more video content on YouTube and I started delving into other passions, creative passions that I had, like photography. And now I'm doing some game development and pixel art and, and different stuff that I wouldn't have done before if I had just kept on the same track of, of painting. It was actually quite freeing, even though it hurt my bank account. But uh, now I'm not losing sleep over uh, likes and follows. Um, and now my therapist doesn't have to hear about Instagram in therapy anymore. So good for her. I think a lot of artists and creators in general have felt the burnout of trying to chase success on social media, especially during the pandemic. And I think that people are starting to use it different or just opt out of it being the primary way that they reach an audience or share their work, or at least being at the core of their careers. So I was struggling with how to end this video in a way. So I want to like have a message for both creators and people who like the things that people create. So other artists, if you feel like this system is impossible to figure out, specifically like, I mean, I talked mostly about Instagram, but social media in general, and you're struggling, it's probably not your fault. The, these platforms are not made to benefit you primarily. So don't take it out on yourself. And obviously that's easier said than done. And I did for a long time. And it's still hard for me to unlearn a lot of that, that like the attention that I receive on the internet is not a reflection of the worth of the thing that I made, if that makes sense. And, and my personal worth, I will say to people who want to support creators and like the things that creators make. Find the ways to support them the most directly. There are ways to do that that don't involve spending money, right? Like subscribing and honestly liking and commenting or retweeting things or quote tweeting things or sharing it on, you know, whatever platform that you have. Those things make a genuine difference. Even if only like one person clicks on that link and decides to buy something, that could be money that that artist would not receive otherwise. So there are ways that you can, you can support artists using platforms uh, in a way that doesn't involve you spending money. But I would say more concretely, if you can, buy their CD, subscribe to their Patreon, buy something from their shop, or just give them money directly because that is the most impactful. Yeah, so that's that's how I want to end the video. So don't feel shitty about yourself. Social media is not designed to to let you win. It's it's it can easily not be a reflection of how good the thing you make is. So thank you for watching this video, listening to me rant, 
and a special thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. Um, this sounded like a giant advertisement for my for my Patreon, and it was. So yeah, I want to make more positive content in the future, positive videos, but I just need to, I need to rant about Instagram, and I wanted to talk about why I don't post there anymore. It sucks over there. Uh, fuck it. So I guess until next time, do an art.